Hello and welcome to GameSec. Let's take a look at all of the games for the Sega Model 1 and Model 2 arcade boards. Well, all the ones we can anyway, because there are a few games that aren't yet able to be emulated. And since the Model 1 came out before the Model 2, I figured it might be appropriate to look at the Model 1 stuff first. What do you guys think? Ah, <laughs> good. The Model 1 first showed up in arcades in 1992. It was Sega's first arcade board designed with 3D polygon graphics in mind. It used an NEC V60 running at 16 MHz for its main CPU, and it had additional DMA controllers and three Z80 CPUs. It had just under 40 MB of RAM. It could show upwards of 410,000 polygons per second, or 180,000 with all of the effects turned on. And those effects were minimal, limited to simple lighting and shading. It ran at a medium resolution of 496 by 384 and had 56 PCM sound channels. Now, there are basically only four real Model 1 arcade games, so let's check them out. Since we're doing this alphabetically, we start with Star Wars Arcade. This is a cool looking game, but it plays kind of clumsily. Is that a word or is it just clumsy? Check the comments below because I'm sure someone will have an answer. Most of the time, you're flying around 3D space, taking out loads of TIE fighters, which honestly isn't all that fun. Then you might get to do something interesting like take out a Super Star Destroyer. Parts like this look awesome, but man, you get hit like crazy. This game is super tough. It was also super cool in its own time, but I'd much rather play Atari Star Wars game. However, that's just me. Next is Virtua Fighter. This game really took off and it was incredibly popular, mostly in Japan. You have two attack buttons and a block button. The jumps here are extremely floaty, but that's part of the charm for sure. The characters all look pretty silly, but I love the flat shaded look of pretty much every Model 1 game. I'm not very good at this one, but I always have a fun time playing it. I think my main issue is that I never press the block button. I'm just too used to holding back to block as that feels far more natural to do. The music and sound here are also pretty good. It's a very technical game and not one that I can personally master, but I think anyone can have fun with it. Virtua Racing was the first game that was made for the Model 1, arriving in 1992. Here, you race Formula 1 cars around three different tracks, and well, that's basically it. Sounds pretty simple, but it's super fun. Many cabinets can be linked up together for head-to-head -head play with a bunch of people. Another feature of this one which was unique at the time was the ability to shift between four different viewpoints by touching one of four buttons at any given time. Despite only having three courses, I never get bored playing this one but I only play it for maybe 20 minutes at a time, so there's that, I guess. The flat shaded polygons look great, and this game even incorporates a 16 by nine widescreen mode, which was very forward thinking at the time. The music plays each time you pass a checkpoint, but it quickly stops, which is weird. It's good stuff though. This one set the foundation for many racing games to come. There's also Virtua Formula. This is basically an updated version of Virtua Racing. It focuses more on multiplayer, but the basic game remains exactly the same. However, now you start each race in cockpit view instead of a chase view. There's also a new intro and some other odds and ends here and there. Curiously, this one doesn't support 16x9 widescreen. It's interesting that this exists, but in the end, it's not much more than a footnote. And then we have Wing War. I just talked about this one and left in the Arcade 9, so I'll do my best to keep this short. You fly planes and you take turns attacking an opponent and then they attack you while you dodge. This mode is on rails. There's an expert mode where you're not on rails and you can fly around how you like, but your goal is still to defeat your opponent. It's a really fun game that was never ported home and I love the way it looks. 
Also, this was the last real game released for the Model 1 hardware. Model 1 game I can't show you is Deno Senki Net Merc. This was a VR shooting game which can't currently be emulated. Up next is the Model 2 which debuted in 1993 and man it really improved things. It uses an Intel i960 CPU running at 25 megahertz with two Z80 CPUs helping things out. Man, Sega sure loved those Z80s, didn't they? It could feature up to 62 megabytes of main RAM. The hardware added texture mapping to the bag of tricks that it can do. And it can do upwards of 900,000 texture map polygons per second and 300,000 with all of the lighting effects turned on. Like the Model 1, it runs at the same medium resolution of 496 by 384 and also has the same 56 sound channels. There are 31 games that I can show you for the Model 2, so let's do it. First up for the Model 2 is Behind Enemy Lines from Real 3D. In this short game, you're riding in a jeep shooting down enemies who are all trying to defend themselves from your crazy rampage. Seriously, whoever's driving this jeep is absolutely nuts. You can pick up more ammo and missiles by shooting crates and also fuel from drums. You can only fire your missiles at things like tanks, helicopters, planes, and later a bridge structure. The way this game zips around so much and so fast makes it tough to aim at things and kind of detracts from the enjoyment. The graphics are great for their time with some funny usage of 2D elements. The audio is loud and obnoxious. This is the worst light gun game for the Model 2, but it's worth trying once. It's never been ported home. Here's Daytona USA, one of the first games that really made the Model 2 a household name. Well, maybe not a household name, but definitely a favorite among extremely nerdy arcade goers. Now, I don't care about NASCAR at all, but I adore this game and so do tons of other people. Race on one of three tracks and try to defeat your evil opponents by winning. Like Virtua Racing, this one has four VR buttons that let you switch your view on the fly. Absolutely revolutionary! It also has great music by Takanobu Mitsuyoshi, which is so cheesy that you just have to love it. The game is often linked up in arcades so that many, many players can compete simultaneously. It's also still regularly found in arcades today and still earns money. Despite there not being a lot of content here, I still love playing it every chance I get. It's rare for a game to do that for so many people. This is Dead or Alive from Tecmo. That's right, Dead or Alive started here on Sega's Model 2 hardware. This is a pretty cool one-on-one -on -one fighting game which reminds me of the Virtua Fighter series, except this one had a hold button instead of a block button. Outside of the tiny ring, you have explosive things that'll send a fighter flying if they land on them. Personally, I didn't feel this added much to the game. It also has some comically bad boob bounce physics. Oh well, they tried. Still, this one is quite fun and has some good graphics and great music. Next up is Desert Tank by AM2 and Martin Marietta. Hey, my mom worked for Martin Marietta when this game came out. Anyway, this is a tank game with controls that take a bit to get used to. Your goal is basically to make it to the checkpoint before your time and or your life runs out. You can blast enemies along the way to increase your score and eventual rank when the game ends. This is all easier said than done and there are no continues here. Still, this game is fun to play to see how far you can make it. Unfortunately, it was never ported home. Bravo 2-1, the stage is complete. 
complete. Begin the next mission. This is Dynamite Baseball 97. It's a baseball game that was only released in Japanese arcades. It's the follow-up to regular Dynamite Baseball, which is also on the Model 2, but not supported via emulation for some reason. Maybe it hasn't been dumped. The control is pretty tough, especially here using emulation. Even if the control was good, I don't think that this one would be all that exciting anyway. However, it does have different views for batting and pitching, and the split screen is a nice touch. This is another one that's never been ported home. Here's Dynamite Cop. This is the sequel to Die Hard Arcade, but stripped of the Die Hard license. It's still a great 3D beat-em-up, though, with tons of humor. Like, I'm trying to beat up this person who has swords, and this other enemy behind me is trying to attack me with a giant loaf of bread. Or here, you beat up an octopus just because it exists. Stupid octopus, this boat is for people only! I also love the cool quick-time events that happen between scenes. You can play a fantastic port of this one on the Dreamcast. Next is Fighting Vipers. This is a 3D fighting game which was moderately successful. I've never been any good at it as I can't find a single character I really like. You fight inside cages, but they can be busted through at the end of a bout. You can also knock the clothes off of your opponent which makes that area of their body weaker for the rest of the match. It has two attack buttons and a block button. Overall, this one's okay. This one's called Gunblade New York. It's another light gun game. You're in the world's most nimble helicopter gunning down terrorists in New York City. New York City? Get a rope. It can fly where helicopters usually shouldn't be able to. Like seriously, look at this. How? Although this game needlessly zips around a lot and also way too fast, it still remains easy to aim and target your enemies. You never run out of ammo and you don't have to worry about getting items. There are eight stages split between easy and hard difficulties, as well as two different endings. It's worth it to play through once, but man, this helicopter pilot is on crack. This next one is fantastic, though it does tend to get overlooked compared to its sequel. However, it did get a remake on the Switch, a cool remake actually, that came out not too terribly long ago. Hell yeah, it's the House of the Dead. This is definitely one of Sega's better light gun games. And this is where it all started. Shoot down tons of zombies and scary things in an evil house where spooky experiments are taking place. You have to constantly reload, which adds to the stress of trying to kill everything on screen before you get hit. You also have to prevent innocent people from getting killed. There are even multiple routes you can take to add to the replayability. The graphics and the music are fantastic here, and this is a must play. The House of the Dead 2 is a better game, but that's not on the Model 2. Thank you. Next, we have Indy 500. Here, Sega tried to do with IndyCar racing what they did for NASCAR in Daytona. And largely, they succeed, but since this came out well after Daytona, it just doesn't have the same kind of wow factor that that one did at the time. Still, it controls well and the courses are fun. You have three courses and you can even adjust your view like in Virtua Racing and Daytona. The music certainly isn't crazy like Daytona, but it fits. Sadly, this one has never been ported to a home console.
Piers Last Bronx. This is a 3D one-on-one -on -one weapons-based fighting game. Like all of Sega's fighting games on the Model 2 without exception, it uses a block button. I wonder if Sega had an internal rule about that or something. Anyway, a block button means that I'm not very good at it because, like I said before, I never press it. Oh well, if you like block buttons or can at least deal with them, you may enjoy this one. The visuals are pretty cool. This is Manx TT Superbike. This is an average motorcycle racing game where you have two tracks. Well, maybe 1.7 tracks as they each share a portion. I've never found this game very exciting and I can't go faster than around 130 miles per hour or so. Opponents are never on screen. Still, I'm able to rank okay in the name entry screen. This game is certainly no super hang on. Motor Raid here was actually sold as a conversion kit for Manx TT Superbike. That means this futuristic motorcycle racer is pretty rare. Since this is the future and it's also a video game, that means it's dystopian. And just like in all future dystopian racing games, you can attack your opponent. The game isn't very long with only three short stages to race through before it's all over. That's pretty typical for the Sega Racing arcade games though. It's a lot more fun than Manx TT, even if it looks kind of ugly. This is another one that was never ported home. Here's Over Rev by Jalico. That's right, another racing game. It looks fairly nice, but honestly, the gameplay is pretty average. The sound of the tire squealing will get on your nerves rather quickly. There are four different courses to race on in this mediocre title. This was also never ported to a home console. This one's called Pilot Kids, and it's from Psycho. Psycho is known for their shooters, and that's exactly what we have here. Except this one is basically another example of toys which come to life, which was all the rage for a short while. You have a normal shot as well as a lock-on combo type of thing, but in reality, it's fairly basic. That doesn't mean it's not enjoyable, though. The scenes you fly through are pretty fun to look at. However, the stages are quite short. It's definitely worth playing just for the visuals. This was the final game that was released on the Model 2 and it was never ported to a home console. It's not the final game in this episode though since, once again, I'm doing them alphabetically. It just makes it easier to timestamp the video. Next up is Rail Chase 2. This light gun game has you riding in a minecart shooting at everything, and everything wants you dead. Even the ice will dislodge itself to try to kill you. I think the main character should probably take a hint that most of the world doesn't want him to be alive. This game is literally on rails. Even when you go off of the rails, you still somehow manage to get back on them. Talk about luck. What I like most about this game is the physics are very realistic. Just kidding, they're definitely anything but, but hey, that's part of its charm. I'll never listen to you again. Of course, like a lot of Sega arcade games, this one really moved you around and rocked you back and forth as you went over the tracks, only adding to the fun. It actually makes it more of a ride. You can choose your own path in a few different parts of the game as well. Overall, it's a chaotic yet very fun time, and it's never been ported home. All right, we've got 15 more games to go. By the way, I'm really enjoying making this episode. Hmm, I wonder why. All right, let's finish this up.
Ah yes, Sega Rally Championship. I talked about this entire series in the last episode, so I'll be brief here. But let's just say that this is one of the best games on the Model 2. Despite not having many tracks at all, I never, ever get tired of playing this. It's a true classic in every sense of the word. This is called Sega Ski Super G. Man, that's just so fun to say. Sega Ski Super G. This, of course, is one of those deluxe cabinets where you had to stand on skis and you maneuver by leaning and tilting them. Emulation just can't replicate that, but it's still fun to play, even with a regular old controller. The graphics are great, and even the music is exciting. Naturally, it's never been ported home. Here's Sega Touring Car Championship. I remember I bought the Saturn version of this game and immediately returned it to the store for a full refund. Had I ever popped any quarters into the arcade here, I would have demanded my money back as well. It looks great, it really does, but the control is very twitchy and the sound effects are some of the worst I've heard in any video game. This is Sega Water Ski. As the name implies, it's made by Sega and, well, you're water skiing. You have to steer yourself through the buoys to get extra time. You also need to go over the jumps and do tricks to add to your score. There are many different tricks that you can do. Of course, this one is another deluxe cabinet. In fact, we had one in a theater that I used to work at. This 25-year-old footage is, unfortunately, all I have. The game is fun to play in emulation, and even more fun to play in real life. There are only three courses though, and your only goal is to get as high of a score as you can. And surprise, surprise, this was never ported home. Next is Sky Target. Sega felt that they should give an Afterburner style game a try using polygons. You have unlimited shots and missiles to take various enemies down, including bosses which are timed. That's right, they can escape if you don't shoot them down fast enough. You can even choose your path in certain parts of the game. This one may be a bit ugly, but it's gorgeous compared to the hideous Saturn port. Overall, it's not as fun or as intense as Afterburner, but it's far more interesting and fun than G-Lock was. This is Sonic the Fighters, and it's Sonic's second arcade game. It's a one-on-one -on -one 3D fighting game. You have two attacks and a guard. But here, the guard is a barrier and they can be broken. Once it's broken, you lose one and you can even run out and be left defenseless. I love the visual style of this game with its clean, flat, shaded look. The music's not bad either. It's definitely one to try because, well, you might like it. This is Super GT 24 Hour from Jalico. This one offers two tracks, a short one with five laps and a longer one with only three laps. The visuals are pretty nice. The longer track even has some time changes to simulate racing for 24 whole hours. Yep, that's right, each lap takes eight hours, if I'm doing the math right. Overall, this isn't a bad racing game at all, but it's just not one of the greats. Extended time. Here's Top Skater. 
This uses another specialized cabinet and is almost impossible to play with a real controller. It's never been ported home. It looks cool, though I've never played a real unit. The licensed soundtrack will limit how much I can show you after I shut up about this game, which is right now. Here's the excellent Virtua Cop. This one is a lot slower than the other light gun games on the Model 2, but it's still extremely fun. Choose your mission and shoot all the bad guys before they shoot you. There's only three missions, but they're each pretty long for an arcade game. This one is definitely another classic. Virtua Cop 2 was also on the Model 2. Naturally, this is more of the same, but that's not a bad thing. The pace has been picked up slightly from the first game. This time, you can even choose your route once in each of the game's three levels. Plenty of fun to be had in this sequel. Of course, we can't leave out Virtua Fighter 2. This one plays more or less just like the first one, which means I still suck at it. It also means I still have fun playing it regardless of that. The jumps are still floaty here. This one really updates the visuals big time and adds a couple of characters. The backgrounds also look amazing, especially considering the time this game came out in 1994. This was another huge hit for Sega in the arcades and even at home once it was ported to the Saturn. This is Virtua Striker. It's a soccer game, and sadly, not a very interesting one. It's much more bland than the stuff that's on, say, the Neo Geo. Sorry, but there's really nothing here to keep my interest up. But hey, it exists. Here's Virtual On. That's right, they actually remembered the letter L in Virtual, but only for this game for some reason. This is an arena fighting game where you battle mechs. It has tank controls, literally. That means you move and steer with two joysticks. Unfortunately, the game isn't very responsive at all with an Xbox 360 controller. Aiming is a nightmare and everything seems super slow. I remember the actual arcade feeling a lot quicker, more precise, and really just a lot more fun to play than what I'm experiencing here in emulation. The music is fantastic, but there seems to be some emulation glitches in some of the visuals. Wave Runner. I talked about this one recently and left in the Arcade 9, so again, I'll be brief here. This is a super fun watercraft game that lets you race around three different tracks. Like most Sega arcade games, it has a very high energy level, which makes you want to keep on playing. But come on, it's no substitute for Wave Race 64. Finally, we have Zero Gunner. This is another shooter from Psycho. This time it's one of those three-quarter overhead angled shooters that some developers like to make thanks to the new power of game hardware. This one's pretty standard, other than the ability to lock on enemies that seems to occur automatically. The visuals are kind of drab and the music makes me even more bored. This one's not really my thing, but hey, if you like mediocre shooters, you may enjoy it.
And there you go, every single game for the Sega Model 1 and Model 2 boards. Well, except for the ones I couldn't cover because they haven't been properly dumped yet. It was a hell of a time to be an arcade goer, perhaps a last great era where arcades actually felt like arcades. Anyway, what do you guys think of the Sega Model 1 and Model 2 boards? Let me know. In the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack. Yes, the Sega Model 2 arcade board. Time to play some sweet arcade games at home. How does this even hook up to the TV anyway? Oh, I know. Daytona, hell yeah! Model 2, Model 2, give me game number 2! Oh, Virtua Fighter 2? This is the best! Model 2, Model 2, give me something else special from you! Oh, Sega Rally, alright! Model 2, Model 2, give me the next game in the queue. Green Dog? Can't really think of anything funny to say about this. In fact, I have no idea how to end the sketch. Maybe if something explodes...